superhero strippers, streetwalkin' beauty queens, 24-7 chicken mother freaking nuggets, all aboard the hot mess train wreck. You can't unsee these awkward moments from Wife Swap. Let's start with the episode that once broke the internet. In season 5, the upscale Stevens Fowler family of San Francisco swapped wives with the salt of the earth Long family from small town Missouri. And right off the bat, the Stevens Fowlers wanted America to know how elitist they were. Which, of course, backfired brilliantly. And after a walkthrough of the Long's house, Renee Stevens remarked, I'm guessing we're not looking at advanced degrees here. Unlike her own home filled with organic groceries and fine art, the Longs preferred fast food and paintball. But throughout the two-week experience, San Francisco hubby Stephen Fowler repeatedly berated swapped wife Gayla Long and snubbed Middle America. Your two languages appear to be uh, bad English and redneck. She's a very rude lady, isn't she? But that's okay, she doesn't have an education. God, that woman is the most stupid woman I've ever met in my life. According to Today, the comments sparked immediate backlash from the public. It even spawned the now-defunct StephenFowlerSucks.com, a Facebook group called I Cannot Stand Stephen Fowler from Wife Swap, and death threats. In an interview with the Noe Valley Voice, Fowler said he regretted going on the show. He revealed he was fired from his job two weeks after the episode aired and that it put a strain on his marriage, adding, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Back in Season 1, the conservative gun-toting Smoke family swapped with the liberal Free Spirit Beaver family. But what made this episode so awkward was the tension between the Smoke couple. Wife Aletha refused to share a bed with her husband Glenn for over 10 years because of his snoring. Opting instead for bunk beds, Glenn admitted, I would like to have a, my wife to be more loving, being more close to me, maybe get back to sleeping in the same bed. During the first week of the swap, Glenn proudly showed off new wife Amy Beaver to friends and family at a bonfire gathering. But the cringe intensified with Glenn confessing, I was expecting someone big and fat and ugly. I wish I had her as a, a wife. Yikes. While we don't know how Aletha and Glenn's marriage worked out, the Beavers made a comeback on TikTok. Their daughter Emily designs and sells crocheted tops, which her parents proudly model while they dance their yarn balls off. This superhero episode got super uncomfortable. In Season 6, the Saboran family of Wisconsin swapped with superhero duo, the Owen Ladinos. While the Saborans moved out to the country to escape big city life, the Owen Ladinos fought off boring relationships by running superhero-themed couples workshops in New York City. They dressed in costumes at all times of day, much to the chagrin of their teenage daughter. No. While we admire the Owen Ladino swagger, they awkwardly didn't know how to read a room. When wife Shanti met her new conservative family for the first time, she dressed in her midriff-exposed, short-skirted costume, which horrified everybody. As Brooke Saboran noted, She kind of looks like a stripper to me. I thought it was very inappropriate. I mean, like, she was wearing thigh highs, and trust me, I was sitting next to her, got a very good view. Season 1 offered an interesting take on family-friendly primetime fare when the militant vegetarian Reimers family swapped with the loose and rowdy Bittner clan. Parents Paul and Melissa Reimers prided themselves on raising their children with strict rules and boundaries, and violations earned swift punishment. The kids even had a leather belt called the Whacker, menacingly nailed to the back of their bedroom doors for spankings. Ideally, children should always do what they're told, but they don't. Mercifully, we never saw the Whacker in practice during the episode. Still, the image was shocking. Wife Cindy Bittner shared all of our own concerns when she admitted, I didn't really think people were like this. Very controlling. The kids are treated like robots, I think. I don't like it. In Season 6, the goth Schroeders swapped wives with the hockey-obsessed, uber-competitive Wordles. And the cringe crept in early with the Schroeders picnicking in the cemetery in their haunted garb. Mom Sheila calls her children her gothlings, and Dad Eric, who worked for a ballet company, makes his sons take dance lessons rather than playing football. To each their own, but it was awkward to watch the kids confess that they aren't into the goth life. Son Alec even admitted, People sometimes make fun of my hair. They say I'm a girl 
Equally awkward on the other end of the spectrum are the Wordles, who call their sons losers and other names when they mess up on the ice. Mom Stacy is immediately uncomfortable when she gets switched into the gothic home, noting, They're freaks. They're freaks. They're absolute freaks. Throughout the episode, Stacy and Eric got combative about each other's parenting methods, and names of all kinds were hurled between them. Stacy called Eric an idiot, and Eric called Stacy a cancer. And then production called it a wrap. Season 5's off-the-grid Pata Van Hickman family of Virginia swapped with the suburban New Jersey Burroughs clan. Describing themselves as modern pioneers, the Pata Van Hickmans forego electricity in a log cabin with their two kids. While they grow their own food, they also conserve resources by sharing bathwater and rarely flushing the toilet. Parents Delora and Steve also showed off Delora's armpit hair that she has grown out for six years, with Steve going in for a whiff. My nightmare would be a woman who shaves every hair off of her body so I could never get a scent of anything human about it. <laughs> Much to Steve's horror, his wife is swapped with Shannon Nicole Burroughs, a materialistic mom who doesn't hesitate to drop serious coin on cosmetic surgeries and designer trends. Steve took another stab at reminding viewers of his actual preferences, sharing, Shannon is wearing a lot of, I'm sure, expensive perfume, but I prefer the Eau Naturel 100% of the time. Season 6 monster hunting family The Robinsons traded wives with the talent managing Parker family. Tracy and Rob Robinson are cryptozoologists who spend all their free time and money hunting monsters in Florida. Their big game is the Swamp Ape, a cousin to Bigfoot, which they hope to take a picture of in the wild. After the swap, Rob took new wife Andrea Parker on an overnight hunt to find the Swamp Ape. He even showed off some special ordered chimpanzee urine soaked bait to lure the creature out of hiding. Are you serious? I am. Unfortunately, no swamp apes were spotted on this trip, but things got dramatic when Andrea flipped the house rules to focus on son Josh, who prefers music over monsters. That involved Rob potentially selling his old action figures and monster hunting gear to fund studio time for Josh, and Rob rejected it immediately. You can't live every breathing moment for your children. I mean, come on now. Andrea, in a fitting punishment, then sent Rob to his room, adding, He is very needy. He is like a big old baby. The feminist Boss family swapped with the Gustafaro family, who catered to their teenage beauty queen Alicia in season 4. Described as the princess of pageantry, we watched Alicia get pampered throughout the episode with zero awareness of anyone else. Her parents even did her homework for her and gave her a Christmas gift every day. Apparently, being beautiful is a full-time career. I do feel sorry for people that are not gorgeous people. But things got serious post-show. According to NY Daily News, Alicia sued ABC for $100 million after the episode aired. The lawsuit claimed that Wife Swap staged scenes to maximize Gustafaro's public embarrassment. It also stated that Gustafaro suffered from panic attacks and was forced to transfer schools due to her brutal portrayal. Alicia would later find herself in court for prostitution charges, which were subsequently dropped. And then again for a lawsuit against the owner of several strip clubs for unpaid overtime, according to the Buffalo News. Chicken Nuggets is like my family. Long live King Curtis. In season 5, we met the Hollands of North Carolina who loved demolition derbies and happy kids. And that included allowing son Curtis, aka King Curtis, to eat all the chicken nuggets his heart desired. The family swapped with the Browns, Joy and Demarcus, who ran a fitness boot camp and enjoyed a healthy lifestyle. So what happened when a wellness-minded mom with good intentions got in the way of the King's chicken nuggets? Absolute chaos. I think Joy's too skinny and she needs to eat a little bit and be happy. When Joy implemented her week of rules for the Hollands, including no more processed foods and more vegetables, Curtis objected. Bacon is good for me. She's going to try to stop me, but she can't run those little high heels. 
This one isn't for the faint of stomach. In Season 3, we meet the Haigwoods, who were doomsday preppers in Iowa. They swapped with the modern, city-dwelling Hess Webb family, who spent much less time anticipating the end days. The Haigwoods ate an exclusively raw food diet, including raw chicken, eggs, and even rotting meat. And teenage son Lee was caught on camera multiple times drinking raw eggs for breakfast. He claimed he slugged down a dozen a day. But wait, it gets worse. The family also believed all bacteria was good and refused to use chemicals to clean the house. And themselves. We watched the family brush their teeth with raw butter, which they claimed tasted like blue cheese. Gross. During Kim Hesweb's week of rule changes, she took the whole family to the doctor for checkups and for Dad Mike to talk to a nutritionist. The dispute climaxed when Kim had the family eat cooked food at a restaurant for the first time, and the Haigwoods claimed to feel sick after the meal. As Mike finally admitted of his kids, They're such troopers. <laughs> and I want to do the rules, but I don't want to do it at their death. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more list videos about your favorite reality shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.